Welcome back to the Forger modding tutorial series. This is a more advanced tutorial that heavily builds upon the concepts laid out in the previous entries in this series, so I highly recommend that you go back and watch them if you haven't done so already. In this tutorial, we're going to add a completely new type of gear to the game, along with a structure that can be used to craft it. Here's the pitch. The player can build a magnet press, which allows them to craft magnets. Magnets are a new type of gear and have four different levels. The basic premise of this gear is that it causes resources to automatically move towards the player from a distance. Each time you craft the next level of magnet, the area of effect increases and the speed at which resources are attracted to you increases. I've already created all the sprites we'll need for the structure and the four level of magnets, so without further ado, let's get to coding. The first thing I'll need to do is put the images I've created inside the mod folder. When I'm making a mod that has multiple images, I like to put them in their own folder. I'll put them under Resources, then Sprites. Then I'll just reload GMEdit so that they show up in the sidebar here. The first bit of coding we can get out of the way is actually adding these sprites to the game. If you saw the previous tutorial video on structures, you'll remember that this is a pretty easy thing to accomplish. I'll just fast forward through this part since it isn't anything new. The only important thing to point out about this code are the origins. For the items, I've made the origins the center of the sprite, which is generally a good thing to do with item sprites. For the structure, I made the origin near the base of the structure since I like how that feels in-game. Also note that I save each sprite to a global variable so that I can use them in other places throughout the mod if I need to. Now that we have all of our sprites added in, we can create the magnet items themselves. To do this, we'll use the item create function from the item database section of the docs. Let's go through each argument one at a time since there are quite a few. To make my life a little easier, I think I'll write each argument on a separate line this time. This way I don't need to scroll through one long line to see all of the arguments. Also, keep in mind that although we have four items to make, we really only have to do this one time. We can just copy and paste what we come up with for each of the other items and change what we need to. So let's start with the first magnet the player can get. The first argument should always be undefined, similar to the first argument of structure create. The next argument is the name of the item. We're creating the very first level of magnet here, so I'll call it basic magnet. After the name, we have the description. This is what shows up when you go to craft the item, and also when you pick up the item for the first time, since this item will count as gear. I'll just fill in something short here. Then we have the sprite. I'll use the global variable I made earlier that contains the basic magnet sprite. After sprite, we have the item type. We want to make gear so we can put item type gear here, as shown in the item type enum. After the item type is item subtype. This is really only used for specific behaviors in Forager, so only set this if it applies to your item. For us, item subtype none is just fine, since none of the subtypes matter for us. Next, we have value. This defines the base amount of coins you'll get when you sell this item. Since we're making gear, the player won't be able to sell it at all, so I'm just going to put zero since it doesn't really matter. Following this is the healing value. The number we put here is really just a kind of shortcut if you want to make an item that heals the player. The number you put here will cause the player to be healed by that amount when the item is used. Again, doesn't really apply to us, so I'll put zero. After the healing value is the energy value. This is the same as the previous argument, but for restoring energy instead of health. Another zero will go here, since it doesn't apply to our magnet. Moving on, we have the item blueprint. This is where we determine what materials are required to craft the item. This works the same way that it does when defining the recipe for structures. You make an array and alternate between item and amount. For the base magnet, I've decided I want it to cost 20 iron ingots and 5 nightshade. Now that we have that set up, we can move on to the usage script. Here we pass a script that will run whenever this item is used. Our magnets are going to work passively, so the player isn't ever going to manually use them for anything. That being said, we can't actually put undefined here. Forger requires that we put something here, so I'll just make an empty script. This script has no functionality whatsoever, and its only purpose is so that Forager doesn't encounter an error when registering our item. You may remember from the last video that Forager only accepts functions that have been properly set up with script wrap for structures. Items are no different. After the usage script, we have the crafting time. 
This is how long the item will take to craft in-game frames. The game runs at a speed of 60 frames per second, so putting a value of 60 here would indicate that the item takes 1 second to craft. I want my item to take 10 seconds to craft, so I'll put 60 times 10. The last argument we're going to fill out is the unlocked flag. Putting true here makes the item unlocked by default, as opposed to having it unlock when the player meets some sort of criteria. There are still some arguments remaining for item create, but they don't apply to our magnet, so we can just stop here. With all of that done, we have our first item set up. Let's store the result in a global variable so we can use it later. We still have three more magnets to make, but like I mentioned before, we can just copy this item and tweak it. After a quick copy and paste, let's change it up. First, I'll change the name to Crystal Magnet and adjust the description. I'll update the sprite and move on to change the recipe a bit. Let's say 10 steel and 10 crystals. Oh, and I'll change the global variable name too. Everything else I can just leave the same. Now I'll repeat this for the level 3 magnet. And the level 4 magnet. Done! We have four magnets in our game. To make these items behave like regular gear, we'll need to create a new gear category and assign them to it. Gear categories are how Forager internally organizes usable items of the same type, like how shovel or swords work. You craft the base version, and then you're continually able to craft better and better versions until you have the best version. Gear also has special properties, like sometimes showing up in your toolbar and not being able to be sold or appear in your inventory like a normal item. To make our own gear category, we can use the gear category create function from the gear database section of the documentation. The first argument can be undefined, which is starting to seem like a pattern with Forager systems. Next is the name, I'll just put magnets. After the name is the toolbar flag. This determines if gear in this category should appear in the toolbar. Magnets work passively, so there's really no need for the player to have them equipped. Because of this, I'll say no to appearing in the toolbar and just put false. Finally, we have the rotates argument. This is only used to determine if the player can swing this item when it's used, but the player is not able to equip magnets, so this doesn't apply to us. I'll just put false. Once that's done, I'll save it to a global variable. Now that we have our gear category, we can assign the items we've made to it so that Forager knows to group them all together. This can easily be done with the gear category add items function. The first argument is the ID of the gear category, and we already have that saved to a global variable. After the gear category, we can just put all of our items. All I have to do is write out the global variables that we created for them. The order here is important, as it determines the order of crafting progression. And done. We have four magnet items, all assigned to a brand new gear category. That was a lot of work, so I think it's about time we get to see the fruits of our labor. Let's save and open this up in-game. I'll enable the mod, click compile, and start a new save with cheats. We don't currently have a way to craft our items, since we haven't made a structure that can do that yet but we can still test the items out with the give command. If we type slash give, and then type the global variable name that contains our item, we'll get it. Awesome, that looks to be working just as expected. Note that it doesn't show up in our inventory or our toolbar, which just means that we've set up everything correctly. The gear in the base game shows up in this menu, but modded gear does not. Since our magnet doesn't do anything yet, the player can't actually tell if they have it. But once we add the functionality to attract items, that won't really be an issue. Let's go back to the code. Now that we know all of our items are set up correctly, let's make the structure that allows the player to craft them. We already know how to make structures with structure create, so I'll go through this quickly. The first argument is undefined as usual. Next we have the name and the description. Then the structure type, which should always be structure type base. Then we have the sprite, which we added earlier. Next, we have another argument that should always be undefined. 
And then we have the recipe. I'll do 30 iron ingots. Now we have the size, and I've already decided that my structure will be a size of 2. Now we're getting to the interesting stuff. The next argument is the producer argument, and this time we're going to set this to true, since this structure will produce magnet items. After that, we have the items argument, which is an array of the items this structure produces. Here we are going to put only the basic magnet, and not all four. This is because our magnets are all in the same gear category, so we only want the next level of magnet to be available after the previous one has been crafted. Being that only one magnet should be available at a time, we just put the base magnet to start. Next I'll put true here so it is unlocked by default, and for the next argument we have the category. I'll put this in the industrial category. The final argument is where we define an array of gear categories this structure caters to. This is what tells the structure to automatically use the next gear item if the previous one has been acquired. We'll put the gear category we just made right here. It doesn't feel like we've done too much, but I think it's time to test one more time, just to make sure the structure works right. I'm going to make a fresh save since we gave ourselves the base magnet before, and I want to start from scratch. So first, I'll give myself iron ingots so I can craft the magnet press. Now I'll just build it somewhere. And now let's interact with it. Okay, great, our base magnet shows up. I'll give myself some nightshade so I can craft it. Now I'll click craft. Looks like the crafting time variable is working properly. This would go faster if we had a power plant or drone to speed it up. Okay, that's working. Now let's interact with the structure again. Okay, great. The next level of magnet automatically appeared, so everything seems to be in order. The name kind of overflows a bit, but I don't really mind that since I really like this name. I won't craft this now since I'm pretty confident it's all working correctly. We've come a long way, but now it's time to finish this mod by making our magnets functional. I think an easy way to make our magnets work is by using the global step event. This is an event that runs every game frame, so we can use this to move around the resource drops on the screen in a smooth way. Now, I could just put the event function at the bottom of our main GML, but I think I'm going to do something else for organizational reasons. I'm going to make a new GML file and name it onstep.gml. Forager essentially combines all the GML files in your mod folder into a single GML file when it loads, so if you want to organize your code better, you can split things up into multiple files. I think this is a good idea, since we already have a lot of stuff in main.gml that I'd like to keep separate. So in this new GML file, I'll define the onstep event. The first thing I'll put in here is a special check to see if we're in the game. The event will run in our mod even when we are on the home screen, but I only want to apply magnet functionality when we're actually playing the game. An easy way to check if we're in game is by checking if object player exists. In Forager, obj player is the player object. So if we check if this exists, we'll know that the player is currently playing a game. If the player doesn't exist, we know we don't need to worry about magnet functionality. So, if instance exists obj player equals false, then exit. Exit is a keyword that tells GameMaker to just stop executing the current script. Next, I'll make a variable for distance and a variable for speed. Our magnets will have a specific distance that they are able to pull resources from, and they also have a speed at which they pull the resources. So we'll use these variables later to handle those parameters. Next we'll need to check which magnet the player has, if they have one at all. To do that, we can use the gearGet function. This function returns a property of the gear category you provide. So the first argument is the gear category, and the last one is the type of data you're looking for. We want to know what current gear from that category is unlocked, so we can use gear data current, which I found in the docs enum section. This will return the ID of the item the player has unlocked from this gear category, or a negative number if they don't have any gear from the category at all. To check for a specific item, we can do if current gear item is equal to the item ID we want to check. So I'll check for global dot item basic magnet. So if the player has the first magnet tier, this evaluates to true. Inside here, I'll set up the distance and speed properties for the basic magnet. How about we start with a distance of 50 pixels and a speed of 1. So what if the player has the next tier of magnets? Well, we can pop an else if on the end here to check for the next tier. 
If current gear item is equal to global dot item crystal magnet, which is the tier two magnet, I'll put some upgraded parameters in here, like 70 for distance and 1.5 for speed. Let's repeat this process for the final two tiers of magnets. The hardened magnet can have a distance of 100 and a speed of two. And the electromagnet can have a distance of 200 and a speed of four to make it really powerful. The last thing we need to account for is if the player doesn't have any magnet unlocked at all. To handle this, we can just stick one final else statement at the end. This else block will trigger if none of the previous if statements were true, which means the player doesn't have a magnet yet. In here, I'll just put exit to indicate there's nothing more to do in this script. Now that we have the magnet parameters set up for each magnet, and we correctly check if the player has acquired a magnet at all, we can get to actually making the magnet functional. The first thing we'll need to know is the name of the object that represents resource drops. I happen to know from my testing that the name of these objects is par resource. If you're trying to determine the name of an in-game object, it might be helpful to know that the documentation has a list of every object in the game, which is really handy to scroll through if you get stumped. We want to apply some logic to every single instance of this script. So to do that, we can use a with statement. Any code we put here will run for all instances of the par resource object. First, we need to check if the object is within a certain distance of the player. To do this, we can use the same function we used for our healing statue from a previous video, which is point distance. We plug in the player coordinates, then the object coordinates with X and Y, then we check if the distance is less than the current magnet operating distance. Now, we just need to move the object towards the player. GameMaker has a built-in function that we can use for this, which is move towards point. This does exactly what you think it does. It moves the calling object towards whatever point you provide at whatever speed you provide. I'll put the player coordinates here because we want the object to move towards the player. And for the speed, I'll put the speed variable we set up. There we go, should be all set now. Let's test it out back in our save. A fun way to test this out would be to destroy all the natural resources at once. We can do this with some quick GML. Instance destroy par natural should do the trick. Hmm, it works well, but something is off. It looks like the resources move horizontally towards the player, but not vertically. This is probably due to some internal behavior of the object we don't know about. In situations like this, you'll want to make use of the res dump command. When you run this command and supply the name of a built-in object, it will create a file on your computer that contains useful information about the object that we wouldn't be able to know otherwise. You can locate this file by typing the following into your search bar, percent local app data percent. Then scroll and find the forager folder. In here, you should find a JSON file with the name of your object. Open this in a text editor and you'll find a large list of internal variable names. We don't know what these variables are used for exactly, but it's worth looking through them to see if anything stands out. Ah, okay. I see a variable named yy that has a number value. Maybe the object uses this variable to internally determine what its y position should be? The only way to find out is to mess with it. Back in our code, let's do something with this variable, right after our move towards point line. Under here, I'll assign the current y value to this mystery yy variable just to see what happens. Let's load up our save and try again. All right, that seemed to do the trick. Sometimes a bit of experimenting is necessary when modifying built-in objects, but we got lucky this time. Just for fun, let's try out the electromagnet in a big area. Wow, that's awesome. We now have a mod that adds meaningful content to the base game. I could definitely see somebody using this mod in a regular playthrough. If you're interested in using this mod in a playthrough yourself, feel free to grab it off the Steam Workshop, which I've linked in the description. Good luck on your modding journey, and thanks for watching.